I should be doing yoga and I should be positive and I should, 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 should. No. Hey, lovely people. Welcome back. I am still on my retreat and uh, had a little walk outside. I wanted to show you. There's some more horses in the background. No horseback riding for me though. Um, they're just, you know, not available here. It's the neighboring farm that has them and this is not an actual farm. It's just like it used to be a farm and that's where I'm staying. So um, not a lot else to show you out here that you haven't seen in my previous vlog. Or yeah, anyways, wind, sorry. It is a little bit windy. I'm gonna put my hood up. But here's the thing. I want to talk today about self-care. So I'm gonna go back inside and um, let's have a chat about self-care and what that means and how it helps. Uh, and I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments later. Um, if you like this video, obviously give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'd love to see you back again. And uh, thank you to everyone who has already commented and subscribed. I so appreciate it. It's giving me a lot of energy and you know, helping me keep this going. And it's a very exciting project for me. So I'm super grateful uh, to everyone that is subscribing and is liking and commenting. And uh, yeah, I am just super happy to be here. So thank you for joining me. So let's go inside and we'll have a little chat there. So I thought I had to wear my love shirt again because this is all about self-love and taking care of yourself. Well, actually, I think about it, I had another shirt that I was gonna wear for this vlog, so give me a second, I'm just gonna change. And I'm back. So this is what I was gonna wear because I thought it was funny. Uh, Self-care, I think, is quite the opposite of just do nothing. It's actually about doing lots of things. And uh, ironically, before I was diagnosed, sometime last year, I bought myself this because I had decided that I was going to learn about finding peace, treating myself right, moving my body, ending negativity, sleeping soundly, living with gratitude, savoring silence, and learning to say no. And then I never read it because I was too busy doing other things. I was too busy with work. I was too busy being the old me. And yeah, I think it's time I start reading that magazine, isn't it? Um, so I have still not learned to say no, I think. I mean, I've learned to say no in many ways, but there is always that one person that, you know, you really struggle to say no to. So that's one thing I need to figure out strategies for. Um, as far as ending negativity, I think I've always been more of a positive person than a negative person. I, uh, I you know, talk on this vlog quite a bit about, um, you know, the positive side of things, or at least I try to look at the good things that come with really any situation. Uh, but I'm sure that there's things in this resource that I can still use. So I will at some point read it and get back to you. In the meantime, I wanted to talk a little bit about the things that I am doing. So I'm trying to be a lot more um, mindful and less rushed. I'm trying to put less pressure on myself and um, having fewer expectations of what I'm meant to do in a day uh, it frees me up to feel a lot more liberated and happy about the things that I do get done. So if there is something really important that needs to be done, then I try to say, okay, there's one thing I need to do today. And then after that, it's about my treatment and it's about me getting healthy and everything else is kind of a bonus. My old method of self-care was taking a bath. So I've always been a huge fan of baths and you know taking long hot bubble baths in the past with like a nice drink and a book or netflix netflix has been my method of self-care too for probably far too long and i'm questioning whether or not it's entirely healthy it's probably good in small doses but in the good news i have run out of things to watch on netflix and now i need to expand my repertoire of self-care options i am still needing to get more into things like meditation but i have done yoga if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I have actually been doing yoga while on chemo, which I think is pretty awesome. And it's all, you know, about listening to your body. What is it that you can do in that day and that you feel like doing in that day and that, um, you know, you, it doesn't become yet another task. And that's one thing I'm trying to avoid where it's like, I should be doing yoga and I should be positive and I should, 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 should. No. It's like, I need to train myself. I should nothing. I should just be. I should just be me. I should just be happy in this moment and everything else is, you know, it's meant to help. It's not meant to be a task to the degree that it stresses you out because then what's the point, right? I don't wanna get stressed out about having to meditate, not doing it and then being stressed about that 
it, it just makes absolutely no sense. So anyways, back to my list. So I am exploring meditation. I'm exploring yoga. I have gone back to boxing, which I love, love, love doing. And I love my trainer. He is amazing. He just brings a smile to my face. It is the best half hour of my day when we work together. So that's something that is a huge act of self-care for myself. Um, other things I'm doing, I am trying to explore music again. I used to play the piano and uh, with used to, I mean, when I was in high school. <laughs> And then when I moved to Canada, that fell away because I didn't have a piano going through college. And then it took many more years of saving and other things and until I actually bought myself a digital Roland. And that has moved around with me. So I still have that instrument and I haven't used it very much. And so I am now making more time for me to get back into that. So what I'm doing is really, it's not that I didn't have time before, is that I think I was really stuck in this routine of Netflix and baths were my only acts of self-care. And I am now exploring all of these other things and trying to break through that cycle of just being like, oh, just turn on Netflix and, you know, chill out for the evening. So instead of doing that, I'm trying to do other things. Other things that are important acts of self-care, I think, is tidying your house. Even though the tidying process isn't fun or, I mean, depending on what you like, um, it it is a job, it is a task, it may cost energy, but then you get energy back from it later. So it's been a kind of a horrific couple of weeks because of if, if I told the whole story of how we moved, it would you know, it would fill more than this vlog, more time than this vlog really needs to be, so I'm not going to, but yes, just trust me, lots needed to be done and lots still needs to be done. And um, again, I've had fantastic help from my mom. She's She's been doing too much and that worries me, but that's a story for another day. So anyhow, um, I know the whole like tidying up with Marie Kondo is now super popular and everyone seems to be watching that and I'm seeing it pop up on Facebook and you know other places. And so I got into watching a couple of episodes, but for me it was like, okay, this is pretty damn repetitive. I picked up a couple of tips from it, but most of all what I picked up from it was the realization that if I'm not using something and I haven't used it in a long time, why is it in my cupboard? And why is it, you know, cluttering the space? And so I'm applying that instead of just saying, does it bring me joy? Because I don't think everything you own brings you joy, but some things you own because they're useful or you need them, etc. But I'm looking at what is it I'm actually using. So I did a massive clear out of my closet. I got rid of a lot of things that are beautiful, barely worn, um, and I just know I'm not gonna wear them again. So why are they there, right? So anyways, I am donating all of that good stuff and I hope it makes someone else really, really happy. So that's an act of self-care that maybe is not something that you would have thought of as being self-care, but to me it is. You know, another thing that I have been doing uh, fairly regularly since starting treatment is to get massage treatment. Um, I have always had chronically tense muscles, like I get a lot of tension up in my neck and my shoulders. I tend to have a bit of a sore back. I, you know, I've always had these problems and lying in a hospital bed for three weeks does not help, trust me. Uh, so I'm still dealing with this, like this side is really tight and it, you know, it, it acts up at times and it keeps me from sleeping, which is something I need to do. So I've been getting massage treatments every other week or so. So on a chemo week, I tend to get them because then I figure I treat myself, my body works better. I get the blood flowing, which I think helps with the medication. And so overall, it just gives me a feeling of well-being, and uh, it really helps. So that's something that I do, but it isn't for everyone. If you enjoy it, then I would encourage you to explore that more. And, uh, you know, if, if finances are a concern, you can look up massage therapy schools and see it. They usually do discounted rates. Um, I've gone to a massage therapy school and it was a fraction of the cost. There are sometimes people who are just getting newly certified and who need to practice and they'll do it for free. So look around, uh, there's always options. Make sure that your insurance policy doesn't cover it before you start paying out of pocket because maybe you do have some insurance that covers some massage therapy if it's prescribed by a doctor. And most doctors, if you are going through either, you know, a chronic illness or uh, cancer or other, other situations they will probably prescribe it so definitely check into that and another big one let's not forget i've gone away for a few nights so going away and maybe going on a retreat or just having a few days out of your normal routine on a fun little trip where again it's important that if you are now in a new phase of life where your energy is more limited let's say because of you know a, a chronic condition or cancer or something else if your energy is more limited then 
don't have too many expectations for your trip. Just see it as a nice opportunity to break the routine, to get away, to clear your head, and don't have this long list of things that you must see or must do. I've always been a city trip sort of girl, like I wanna go and see stuff, and you come back from a trip usually a lot more tired than before you left. That's probably not a good idea right now. So things that renew you, that give you energy, that restore and allow you to rest are really good trip ideas. So maybe that's a beach for you. Maybe it's still a city break, but where you just really take it easy. And yeah, that's something I'd still like to do uh, in the near future. And I'd like to explore other retreats too. So come along with me for those. I'm really excited. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I will, you will find out shortly after I found out, find out because, well, I gotta book it. So I won't give you any hints yet, it'll be a surprise, but it'll be really fun if you come along. I've mentioned a few things that are costly. There are also things that uh, don't cost much or anything at all. Meditation doesn't have to cost anything. Yoga doesn't have to cost anything because there's tons of videos on YouTube. There's tons of free resources and um, things that are very low cost. I got this super cute coloring book from a friend and, you know, got some color pencils. Now, when these coloring books became popular, I was like, who's gonna do that, right? But then here I am, I'm coloring in a bunny. Isn't he so cute? So I actually found it quite relaxing and I guess that's what it's meant to be. It's just a way to disconnect and, and detach your thoughts and to, you know, do something that is not digital for once because we're always on our computers or phones or whatnot or, you know, doing other things. And the other thing you can do that is fairly low cost or no cost, it's no cost if you have a library nearby, is reading. I've been doing lots of reading. I have read books about cancer, read books about cancer treatment, and now I actually just picked up this book I just showed you that I'm excited to start, which is someone's personal experience going through cancer. And I am excited to read it because it's also supposed to be funny. And I need a lot of funny and happy right now in my life. That's, uh, that's just a need that I have that I need to fulfill and it's not always easy. So um, anything that can add to it, that can bring me to a place of joy, I will embrace with open arms. Um, another act of self-care can be meeting with friends, but it can also then very quickly, and this is just me speaking from personal experience, become very draining because you can you can really set yourself up to overdo it in a sense that you can be like oh i'll meet this person for brunch and then i'm gonna go and see her for a coffee and then actually tonight i have an event i want to go to as well and before you know it with your sort of new energy capacity you're absolutely wiped and then you just feel bad for however long and that's really not a good idea either and this can happen regardless if you have cancer or not like I used to overdo it like that and I ran myself into the ground quite a bit which is probably why it took so long for me to get diagnosed as well because I just thought I had a burnout like I was tired for a really long time and I was still overdoing it so learn from me don't overdo it do the things that make you happy, but also explore some other acts of self-care that you haven't thought about before um, and see if they fit. Like what works for one person doesn't work for another. Some people don't like massages. Some people don't like taking a bath. Some people love facials, um, but you won't know until you try. And some people don't like reading books, but they do love Netflix. And like I had a phase of that, I guess, where I was Netflixing a little bit too much. And then my most important tip, don't feel guilty about it. And I need to teach myself that too. But especially women, I think, find it so hard to take any time for themselves and to enjoy that moment. And I, I struggle with that too. Like I feel guilty as we speak about not working, but it's, this isn't the time for that to be a priority and other things have to become a priority. And so self-care is obviously a big one. And so that's my new job. My new full-time job is getting healthier every day and self-care is a big part of that. So I hope that maybe you draw some inspiration from this. If you have other things that you do, post them in the comments. Oh, I almost forgot. One other act of self-care is this, the vlog. I really like doing it. I love doing it and I love the comments that you guys are leaving. Um, so please leave more. <laughs> it makes me really, really happy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's for me, it is an act of self-care because it's something that brings me joy. So I had to uh, take a little bit of a break there. Um, and I feel like I am now whew, at a place where I need to do what it says on my shirt, just do nothing for a bit. So I recorded 
the earlier vlog and I actually recorded another vlog and I had some yoga and I had some other stuff going on and then yeah I'm pretty tired now <laughs> It's taken it's been a really good day but it takes it out of me and like I said um, in my earlier vlog that's online from last time I've had some anxiety in the past few days um, you guys are gonna see these vlogs come up over a longer period of time but I'm only away three nights and so I have taken this opportunity to both relax and uh, get out of my own head but also to do some more vlogging and that like I said is part of my own self-care so uh, while you're gonna see these vlogs trickle through in the next few days or even uh, over next week I am uh, already gonna be back home by then and so uh, don't think that I'm away on some sort of like two-week retreat because that's not the case anyways I think I'm in the perfect position now, particularly to talk about why self-care is so important and it's important for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you have cancer or not or whether you have a chronic disease or not. Um, you should practice self-care far before anything ever becomes an issue and that's, you know, a lesson that I wish I could tell my younger self. And so, um, yeah, why should you do it? Well, first of all, so that your body can recover from all the stresses it goes through throughout the day from work, from family, from just daily life. And the body is constantly working hard and also constantly trying to renew and heal itself. And so if you give it an opportunity to just relax and um, do something that is very soothing for you, uh, whether that is physically soothing and or mentally soothing or spiritually soothing, then that becomes... Um, something that's very valuable, I think, for your for your body's recovery system. I would encourage you to think about self-care, not just from a physical perspective, not just sleep and rest and bubble baths and massages, but also from a mental perspective. So things like music and uh, art or reading. Um, I'm sure you can think of some more. So let me know what you think are acts of mental self-care. And then there's also spiritual self-care. And this is going to be, there's going to be a, a, a spectrum of, you know, people being either absolutely not attracted to that or very attracted to that. But I think to some degree, we're all on some spectrum of spirituality, whether or not that is uh, found in religion or whether it is not. It doesn't really matter, but you have to take care of your soul as well. And I think you'll know what that means when you feel it. This could be walking in nature and really connecting with the earth. It could be uh, going to church, it could be uh, going to temple, it could be a variety of different things. And so again, let me know what you think that means and what it means to you. But the bottom line is the reason for self-care is so that you can restore, renew and keep going and actually be a lot more useful. And you know what they say um, in the plane, if the oxygen mask falls you got to put it on yourself first before you help someone else it's because you are absolutely no use to other people if you're not taking care of yourself first yet it's the one thing we most often do is we don't take care of ourselves first we take care of others first and it really should be the other way around because that's how we can optimize our own well-being and therefore our usefulness for others and so if you are actually trying to care for other people at this time please also take care of yourself. It is so important and it is not selfish. It is actually in so many ways a selfless act because it enables you to be there for others. So that's it for today. I am going to end that here and I am going to do nothing for a little while and I'm gonna recover, restore my energy levels and then go from there. And actually I think what I'm gonna do later is uh, I'm gonna go to the sauna. So I'm going to have that as my little additional act of self-care for the afternoon. And as always, I will see you very soon. So till next time, bye.